In this video, I'm going to be sharing my entire workflow of how I go and use Blender Precision Modeling to sort out some small little problem that I have. The small little problem right this minute is basically my 3D printer doesn't fit on my desk. As you can see, the feet are basically almost falling off. Not only that, but right this minute, even at that extreme position, if I put the build plate all the way back, it is putting a lot of strain on the power cable for the heated bed. So we've got to really fix this. Now, the first things first, let's get measurements. So the measurement that I'm wanting more than anything is the build plate completely back, pulling it out to the 3D printer. That's the distance that I want for the back clearance. So that's how much I know I need to bring my 3D printer forward. Now, additionally, we also need to know the thickness of the desk itself. And I also need to know the diameter of the feet. Now, with all of these in place, let's go over to Blender, where you're going to see me modeling this for the first time. I have no idea what I'm going to come out with at the end of this. So let's buckle up and let's see what happens. Right. So now that we have all of our measurements, let's go ahead and design this up. Now, I do have a technical drawing. It's down in the description. But keep in mind that I don't have a technical drawing while I'm doing this. I want to show you how I literally come up with the ideas on the spot. So I'm just going to go ahead and select everything and delete it. So we know that my table is 25.3 millimeters thick. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add a cube with exactly that. So here we go, 25.3. Great. So now we have a reference for the table itself. I'm going to take this in here. I'm going to go ahead and grab these here and also this one here. And I'm going to go and scale this only like this. So I'm taking off the Z. So there we go. There's my table, so to speak, right? Now that we have the table like this, I'm going to go ahead and select everything. I'm going to turn on CAD transforms, go G, and then I'm going to go face selection, this face on the Y, and I want to move it to the O, to the origin point, just because I would like to just have that set at that location like this. Okay, fantastic. So this here is going to be the table. So let's go ahead, rename this as table. And now one thing I do want to do is I'm going to turn on my toggles here. What I want to do is basically not really be able to select this. I think in CAD transforms, I can still like snap to it. That is a no. No, I can. I can still snap to it. So I don't want to be able to select it to move it, but I want to be able to reference off it. So Right, now with that done, let's go ahead and create what we're wanting to make. So I'm going to go and start with a cube, I think, using this cube here. Now we've got 23. Now I want to give this a bit of heft. So I'm going to go here and I'm just going to add five to it. And that should have done it. Why did it not do it? Plus five, please. Oh. All right. 25 to 30. Just let's go with that. So now we have a decent amount of thickness up and down. I think will five millimeters be enough? I think five millimeters will be enough. I'm going to take a look on my calipers right in front of me. See if that is going to be enough. I think that will be enough. So with five millimeters, that's making me feel pretty secure. So let's take this into edit mode now. And I have a feeling a little bit by eye this now is that we've got this here, G, I'm going to go face center on the Y, pull this back. We're about here-ish with the foot. This is the back of the foot. So with that done, I'm going to go Put that into place, hit G once again, go through, press H to go through, then Y, and we're wanting to move this 65 millimeters out. So we know that that is 65 millimeters out. Now I need to go ahead and extrude this out another 22 millimeters minimum. So I'm going to go with 25, you know? Let's just go that extra mile, make sure that this really is going to be fine. And then with that set, I'm going to go ahead and just for my own sake, I'm going to select this face. I'm going to bring the, oops, I'm going to bring the 3D cursor to the selected. 
So cursor to selected, so it's the middle of that. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a cylinder now. So cylinder, I'm gonna bump this up. I'm gonna times that by four. So I've got lots of resolution. Now the radius is going to be 22 divided by two, because that's what we saw the diameter was, 22, and we've got that there. I'm gonna set this now to 10 high. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm gonna set this down to the level of this table. So it should be the same level once it's out. I hope that makes sense. So gonna go ahead, let's go P, selection, because we don't need that to be in. Then let's go G, Z, bring that up. Now I'm gonna go with CAD transforms, G, from that face center, down on the Z, to this face center there. That's exactly what I'm wanting. Fantastic, so I'm gonna just do, for now, a brush boolean like that. So I have that cut away, so that is where my foot is going to be resting. So now that I have that sort of in place, I don't think I have enough coming over on this edge. So let's go ahead and deal with that. So I'm gonna select this face, I'm gonna go G from this face center this time. Oops, I did not move it. I do not know why. So here, G should move. Let's see once again. Oh, it's going a little bit weird. Sometimes this does it. You just have to go out, turn it off, go back in, maybe just fiddle around till it works. Just double check. Let's see normal movement. It is working. Okay, and you know what? Because I don't really need CAD transforms for this one. I'm just gonna go to snapping like this, G. Y, I'm snapping it to this one here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to E and extrude this out. Now I don't wanna go over the top, but at the same time, I don't wanna underdo it. Um, I'm just gonna take a look at my calipers once again and see what I would think would be a decent amount. I think probably the same, let's go 60. I think that's a healthy amount. Because at the same time, like this is going to be holding a lot of moving parts and I just want to double, double, double check that that's going to be happy with how it's going. I'm going to also double check the distance that we have going on right here because I don't think that looks like five. So I'm going to go here, G, and I'm going to go deselect everything. I'm going to go vertex from here on the Z down to this face here. If it feels like doing it, okay, face center. Does not feel like doing it. Yeah, that is not what I'm expecting to see there. That is already not what I'm looking for. Let's see, Z. Sometimes you just need to take both of these into edit mode for it to actually be able to do some snapping. It's all still work in progress, of course. So let's go here, G, vertex from here to Z face. Yeah, that is not what I'm wanting. That's 2.35. So I'm gonna go ahead and move all of this um, by how much? Let's go G, no, normal transforms, G, Z, up by five minus 2.35. And I don't know if that's applied. No, it hasn't because I need to calculate it myself because of course it doesn't work quite like that. So let's bring up a calculator because I am slow. So five millimeters minus 2.35 we get 2.65 up. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of this. I'm gonna go G, Z, I'm going up 2.65, and that will bring me up, and then that there will be five millimeters, which is exactly what I'm looking for. That's it, exactly. So now we know that this isn't right, so I'm gonna go into X-ray, select these faces here. I obviously got the measurements wrong first time round, and then let's go G, Z, we've got our snapping, we're gonna to snap to that vertex. Then we go once again. This time I'm gonna go, am I going to extrude? No, I'm gonna just go G, Z, 
minus five. So now I know that it's five millimeters up on top and it's five millimeters down there as well. So there's a decent chunk of plastic on either side of that. Okay, so with that done, let's see what else is am I going to do. Now, of course, I can't just go ahead and just plop that right like that. I think I've got to go and give this some extra support so to speak so let me just think for a moment and let's see where we'll go with this right i'm not entirely sure really where i'm going with this but i want to just double check the size of this right this minute so this right this minute is 141 millimeters long so it's going to be a decent long print so far so with this here i think what i'm going to do is just give this some no i think i'm happy with how that is really i think what i'm going to do is go a little bit crazy let's go ahead let's under engineer this first instead of over engineering it because that is usually my number one problem so i'm going to go ahead here i'm going to do a limited dissolve on that right there i'm going to grab this edge and i'm going to go and bevel this like that However, I don't want that to be so thin up there. I want that to be five as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add a loop cut. And I'm going to snap it to this vertex here because we know that that's five. Now I'm going to grab this one, do a bevel like that. And I think that there will be strong enough to hold this because if not come on Jonathan it can't be that ridiculous now I'm going to go ahead select everything here go merge by distance because I've just done that complete overextension and then I'm going to go and select all of this here I'm going to go shift D right click then I'm going to go P by selection go out of edit mode bring this into edit mode select the face of this delete only the faces now actually yeah no yes i'm going to delete only the faces select all that edge loop again i'm then going to go with edge offset edge offset and i'm going to do a minus offset inwards so if we were here we're going to go minus five minus five so i think that would be enough material to hold this so to speak so i'm going to then reselect that i want to select this outside loop which i can't seem to grab now because i'm in edge select i need i'm in face select I need to be in edge select let's go delete that edge select everything else go f go e and extrude that out all the way like so give that a quick orientation check yep that is fine so with that orientation check now done i'm going to go ahead and do a brush boolean here which you will see we get this lovely result getting a little bit of weirdness there so i'm just going to grab this go g x and bring it along like so and i think we can sort of call it quits there like we don't really want to get much more complicated than this i might see if i can prettify it by just selecting these two and beveling let's see does that give me anything it does i can do a little something like that um make sure that that doesn't go over the 45 degree mark let me just go up here like this bevel that yeah, that's not going to go. That's going to be exactly 45 degrees. Brilliant. I'm going to go something like that, I think. Brilliant. Now, this isn't going to be perfectly flat just because the nature that I've, the way that I've done this. So we can go ahead and we can move this one back a bit. So let's go with a vertex selection. This one here, you can go GG and it'll move it along an edge. And then you can snap it to this one and see if that will help it doesn't seem to be the way that it's going to help so i'm going to undo that and i'm going to just do this the old-fashioned way by just grabbing these two vertices here 
I'm then going to go cat transforms G from the vertex, this vertex on the Y, snap to that vertex there. And I think that basically gives us exactly what we're wanting. Yep. So let's see. So we've got that like that. I don't know if it's overkill having so much up there, but at the same time, I need this to be as strong as possible. Now, I still haven't added screw holes because I'm I'm going to screw this down into this. So let's add those in a moment. I might go ahead and just, yeah, let's create a reference object now. So I'm going to select all of this and go Shift D, right click, create a new collection, bring that down there. I'm going to call this ref1, then hide everything about it, and then close that away. I'm also going to go save my file now. So I've got my 3D printer foot extension done. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to go ahead and apply everything on it. Delete these here because I do not need them. And the main reason why is because I want to do a little... Um, chamfer around this one i think yeah i do so let's go edge selection this here and this one here please yeah oh chamfer that out give it a little bit like that yeah just because chamfers look fun all right so with that chamfer now in place do i want to chamfer anything else let me just decide because I like to make things pretty too. So I'm going to select this edge and I'll select this edge here. Let's go chamfering and let's chamfer this by 2.5. Will that work nicely? I think that looks quite nice. That gives it a little, a little pizzazz, doesn't it? And it doesn't look quite as thick. That's basically what I'm trying to do here is try and remove how thick this is looking. So I'm going to also select this here, go x-ray and select the bottom one as well. And I'm going to chamfer these by a decent amount. Let's see what we're getting here. Let's go with seven. I'm fine with that. And yeah, that's looking good to me. And then I'm going to also select this edge loop up here. And I'm going to chamfer this a touch, but not so much that we're going to have a problem here. So maybe just a little bit of a chamfer, or is it going to be quite a bit of a chamfer? Uh, English sometimes is hard. Let's go clamp over. Oops, lost that. F9, clamp overlap. Let's see. See, that shouldn't. I should stop that, but oh well, it isn't. You know what, let's ignore that chamfer. Let's just give it to the sides only and see if that looks any better at all. So we'll select that, go chamfer. Is that looking any better? Debatable, really. I wouldn't say it's fantastic, but I wouldn't say it's the worst either. Let's see if we can salvage anything by doing something here. That doesn't look good in my opinion, so I'm going to just leave that like this, I think. I don't need to overcomplicate this. I'm... Just thinking, let's see, 3D printing wise, that's going to be a pain. So let's just go ahead and undo that and just leave it flat, Jonathan. You don't need to make everything pretty with champers. Okay, so with that done, let's go ahead and let's add some screw holes here. So I'm going to go and find a screw that I feel like using for this project. I have some screws and let me see. My screws are going to be... They are 29 millimeters long, four millimeter threads, 
7.5 heads. So let's go ahead. So now that I've found some screws that I'm going to use for this project, I'm going to go and add some cylinders for them. Now the radius of these is two. Let me just quickly check. I've got them right in front of me. Yep, two. So yes, that's way too many vertices, but whatever. That's going to be it for now. Um, also, while we're here, I'm going to do a shift D of this one and do a cutaway straight off of this. So it's now completely cut away. So if I go hide, this is what we have created here. Um, yes, I do have a slight bevel on my table here, but I have no idea what that is. So I'm going to leave this like that. Now I have this here. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to select just the top head here and I'm going to extrude this out by I'm just taking a look at my screw 3.3 .3. let's go with that 3.3 .3. now that that has been extruded out I'm going to go ahead and do a scaling out of this so with that there I'm going to go scale I'm going from the face center, from this face center, I'm going to keep the Z, then I want to go, it doesn't really matter where I go, it just needs to be one of the points here on the edge. Now outwards, I'm going to do a tab, so it does a two-dimensional extrusion outwards, and the head of this screw is 7.3. 7.4, 7 7.5. 7 so 7.5 divided by 2 is what I'm going to be doing here. So 7.5 divided by 2. And uh, so we're going to make this 3.75 millimeters. Oh, I need to make sure that I am in Blender. There we go. 3.75 millimeters. There we go. And that there is basically a perfect representation of our screw. I'm then going to go ahead and extrude this head up a little bit because this is basically going to show us where we're going to be putting this. So I'm going to go and select everything of this. Go G, select a vertex here. Z, bring this down to the vertex of that one. And now I'm going to go and put some of these around about the place. So shift D, move that. I don't know. I'm going to think I'm going to have two about here. I think let's go two there and two down here. And I think that will be enough, right? Or maybe two down here. Yeah. Let's just go with four shift D move that along. Maybe something like, actually I want them to be cross. So maybe just three, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go with just three. So like this, I'm going to select all of these now. Now, the origin point is in the center of all of them. So I can just go ahead and start aligning things here. We could go and try and do this whole advanced thing, but I have no idea what I'm doing there. So let's not do that. So what I'm wanting to do is these two here, I want to align them on their Y. Yep, and that's pretty much it, really. So with those two aligned on the Y, then I can go ahead and use some CAD transforms to put them in the right place that I want to. Actually, see this one? This one's centered to that. So let's grab these. Let's grab both of these. Let's join them. Let's set the origin point to the geometry, which will be in the center. Then we can select both of these and constrain this on the X. So that centered that up. I can go to the same with these as well. String that on the X. So that should now be all centered up. Is that centered? Why is that you? Why are you not centered? It is centered, right? I don't know. My eyes are playing with me. Let's go G X. Move you all the way there. Go like this. Center. A line on the X. Yes. So that is centered. So I think that is good enough. Will this add anything to it? I do not know. Is this just waste plastic? Do I want to add 
some screws down there. Do I want to pull this further out? I have no idea for all of those questions, but I think the best thing is to join this all up. Let's go ahead and do a brush cut of those to keep that like this. Let's also just bring these a little bit G, Y, a little bit more that way, I think. Yeah, like so. And now with that done, let's do our second reference. I'm gonna do a second reference, yeah, Shift D. Go like this now. Oh, I did not select everything. So select this, select that. Shift D, that's it, right click. New collection. This collection is going to go to here. We're going to name this collection Ref2. Or you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. And I'm going to go there and we're going to do a lovely save. Now I'm going to go and apply this. Go with this here, delete that. And I'm going to hope to God that this is strong enough for it because I, I wouldn't expect this to need more, especially considering I'm going to be using a lot of perimeters. I'm going to be printing this from this face upwards. So let's go ahead. Let's just take this into the Prusa slicer and see how long this is going to take. Now, if you wanted a quick way, actually, just before we do that, let's take all of this in here, merge by distance. We had a bit of that going on. Also do a quick 3D print check. We have a couple of non-flat faces, but that doesn't really bother us. Now we could also just go ahead and do an export this way for the STL, but I'm just old and I like to go the long way now. So file, export, STL, and let's take a look at this in Prusa. So here we are in Prusa Slicer. As we can see, it's a decent sized part. I'm gonna go and set the face to this face here. I'm also gonna go and give this a little rotation this way around actually no maybe not this way around something like that so that it's a it's a pretty print for you to see how the time lapse goes of this so here we have that print we're gonna have overhang problems right there but that doesn't really concern me now my print settings i'm gonna go with a 0 0.2 millimeter yep Perimeters, I'm whacking this up to five. Um, I'm going really quite wide with this. And let's see how long that's going to take to print. Okay, that's not too bad. Four hours to print one of these. Let's take a look at what's going on here. I think we could maybe go a little bit crazier with the perimeters and just sort of make all of this completely solid. Um, let's go ahead and let's take a look. Let's see if we go here with perimeters and we whack this up to one, two, three, let's go with eight. Let's go back to the platter. Let's re-slice it. And here we go. Okay. Now we're getting something super duper solid here. That is a very solid print. I don't think we're going to have any problems with this. I think I'm gonna print exactly this. Let's go ahead, let's print this and see what we get out from it, right? I think that sounds like a good idea. I'm gonna go ahead and get this printed. I'll show you it printing and we do have a little bit of a problem here, have you seen? We have a little bit of a something something going on and I'm not entirely sure. Let's take a quick investigation. Ah, we have some extra thin walls right at the corner of our boolean right so that is not perfect for us at all so let's go back and let's edit that out so we're back here so i'm going to actually just grab this i think my quickest edit for this is maybe just a non-precise sort of extension of this here so let's go g and let's go from here z downwards let's give this two millimeters of extra space like so so now it goes thick thin and that's just what we're going to have to deal with because we need to make sure that there is plenty of space right here so that there isn't that problem at all 
this needs to be probably one of the strongest parts of it. So I'm happy with that small correction. I'm going to go ahead, save those changes, re-export this, and let's see it in Prusa once again. So here's the edited foot now back. Let's put this on its side once again. Do that small little rotation like I did last time. Um, I'm going to go a little bit more. Let's go like this. And then here, let's go back to our print settings. Make sure that this is set to eight because we are making something super duper solid here. And let's go back to the platter. Let's slice this up. And now we should not have that problem there. There we go. The problems disappeared. Um, we should be getting a really, really solid print here now. Um, that is looking pretty damn strong, if I do say so myself. So let's just give that a quick little look. So this is going to be a five hour print. Let's just print one actually and see how that comes out. If the first one looks good and it feels good on the table, we'll print out the second one. So yeah, let's go with that thought right this minute. Am I going to bother with that there? I'm not going to bother with that there. Let's just get this printed. <laughs> And with that lovely 3D printing time lapse out the way, let's go ahead and let's install this. So yes, they came out very solid, very sturdy, hardly any movement in them whatsoever. And that's what I'm really, really happy with. Now, when it comes to putting them in, it's pretty simple. All I had to do was check the fit and it fitted perfectly. I slid them in, screwed them down, and that's basically them in place. It was that simple and easy and it works perfectly. Even when there's a 3D print going on, there is no wobble in them whatsoever. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, I would love it if you consider subscribing and hitting that bell as it would mean a lot to me. And also, now that we're at the end, a huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome and I love having your support behind me. It really does mean a lot to me. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here, you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we have a Discord and that's linked down in the description and I'd love to see the things that you guys are making. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.